This is what we're making today, Mysterious Bolognese. First, I'd like to thank everyone who took the time out of their day to give me their input on what the mystery ingredients are in this dish. And after reading each and every single one of your messages and doing my own research, this is how I'm going to make Lisa's Mysterious Bolognese. Alright, so just to let you guys catch up, what we're making here is a pasta dough. We're going to be making fresh spaghetti. So what we're doing right now is sifting out about a cup and a half of bread flour. In the middle of our flour hill, we're going to create a big well and add in our two beaten eggs. With a fork, we're going to slowly incorporate the flour with the eggs until you have a pancake batter consistency. Once we've achieved the pancake batter consistency, we're just going to use our hands and bring all the flour in together. We're then going to knead this dough by hand for 15 minutes. Once we've formed our dough, we're going to saran wrap it, making sure it's air sealed tight, and then leave it at room temperature overnight. This is a bag of peppercorn medley. I wanted a bag of pink peppercorns only, but I couldn't find any, so I bought a bag of peppercorn medley. So now, I'm going to pick out each and every single pink peppercorn out to show you guys my dedication. So while I pick out these pink peppercorns, this is where I remind you to smash that like button and hit the notification bell for new videos. And guys, if you want to support and help fund my recipes, check out my Patreon page at patreon.com slash chefmar. After picking out all the pink peppercorns, we're going to crush it with our mortar and pestle. Next, we're going to cut up this red onion. First, we're going to take off its skin and then cut it in half. Then, we're going to take half a red onion and cut them into quarter inch slivers. This is Pecorino Romano. We're going to grate it really finely. This cheese is similar to Grana Padano but is slightly more salty. The main difference is pecorino comes from a sheep and parmesan comes from a cow. Now that we're done all of our prep, we're now going to go back to our dough. First, we're going to karate chop this dough in half. Then, we're going to form it into a ball, press it down, and roll it out with a pin. We're simply rolling it out thin enough so that it fits through the pasta machine. This is a 10 dial pasta machine. We're going to flatten the dough out to the 5th dial. Once we've achieved our desired thickness, we're going to put it through the spaghetti cutter. This spaghetti that I'm currently holding weighed out to about 275 grams. And this is our fresh spaghetti. Next, we're going to make the base for our sauce. In one cup of pecorito cheese, we're going to add in half a cup of extremely hot water. We're going to give it a good mix until the cheese has melted. Alright, so this is where things start to go really fast, so try to keep up. First, we're going to toast our crushed pink peppercorns for 2 minutes on medium heat. While our peppercorns are toasting, we're going to add salt into our pasta water until it tastes like the sea. Then, we're going to throw in our fresh pasta in the water for 2 minutes. When there's about a minute left with our pasta, we're going to throw in about a cup of pasta water into our pan of toasted peppercorns. When our pasta is about halfway cooked, we're going to throw it into the pan. We're going to give this a quick toss to wiggle the pasta around and then throw in our pecorino sauce. 
At this point, our pecorino sauce is still chunky, but that's okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna toss it around and then add in about a cup of pasta water. What the pasta water will do is thin out the cream sauce and by tossing it around, the flour from the pasta water will help emulsify everything together. I kept tossing this in the pan for about 2 minutes until I got my desired consistency. And as a final step, in a really hot pan, we're gonna saute these red onions for about 4 minutes. We're simply gonna season this with salt and our crushed pink peppercorn. Realistically, you want to be cooking this while you're cooking the pasta so that the pasta doesn't die in the pan. Now let's get ready to plate. Alright, it's time to eat. So, what do you guys think? How does it look like? So, it's been about 20 minutes since the pasta stopped cooking in the pan. And as you can see, it dried up a little bit. It's not as creamy as it originally was. But that's okay, because when you guys try this at home, you guys will be photo shooting the way I am, and you guys will be eating it right off the pan. Alright, so after that first taste, this is what I'm going to say. Even though the fresh pasta is good and it's nice and chewy, this dish, specifically, is better with dried pasta. So when you try it at home, just cook it with dried spaghetti. Fresh pasta is not always the best choice. In terms of taste, you can really taste the pecorino. It's definitely the dominant flavor, but you can also taste the peppercorn. As for the onions, they were flash fried, so it's slightly sweet because it's starting to caramelize, but it's also slightly pungent because it's slightly raw. Overall, it was a pretty good dish. This is my take on Lisa's mysterious bolognese. I'd like to thank everyone who took the time to give me their input and help me arrive to this final dish. Anyways, if you like what you see, hit the like button. And if you guys have any suggestions on what I should cook next, please post in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe.